good morning to everybody uh, welcome to the third session of current electricity in the previous session we have studied the two kirchhoff laws now in this session i would like to explain to you how the kirchhoff laws are applied in real situations for this purpose i have drawn one circuit diagram on the board in which the two cells of emf 6 volt and 9 volt are connected along with these four resistors such type of numericals usually they will be asked in the examinations now i will apply the kirchhoff rule to this network for this purpose we have to branch the currents we have to represent we have to mark the currents flowing through each and every branch here this 9 volt cell start from this 9 volt cell and the current coming through that coming uh, the current coming from that is i1 this current reaches the point b this point b is a junction in this electrical network similarly you take the battery uh, you take the cell of 6 volt and the current given by this is i2 and the current i1 and i2 both are reaching the junction b according to kirchhoff first law it says that the sum of currents reaching the junction must be equal to the sum of currents leaving the junction according to that the current flowing through the branch b e must be equal to i1 plus i2 when this current i1 plus i2 reaches the junction e again then again those two currents are branched i1 current flows through e d and i2 current flows through e to f in this way you have to mark you have to identify the currents flowing through each and every branch now to apply the second kirchhoff law what you have to do is select the closed loop according to that in the left loop if i take the loop in the class y the clockwise direction then i will be getting the loop a b e f a this is the first loop similarly here you take the loop in the anti clockwise direction that means second loop is start from any point okay if you start from b then it is b e d c b so i have selected two loops where i can apply the kirchhoff second law now take the first loop okay so for loop a b e f a start from the point a current flowing through this two ohm resistor is i2 therefore according to kirchhoff second law i have to write minus 2 i2 because the product of current and the resistance current is i2 and resistance is 2 therefore 2 i2 since you are moving in the direction of current the point a is at high potential point b will be at low potential therefore there is a potential drop in the direction of current so potential drops in the direction of current are taken as negative therefore i wrote here minus 2 i2 from b to e from b to e again we are traversing in the direction of current therefore the product of the current and resistance that is i1 plus i2 into 3 this is again minus we have reached the point e again you are moving in the direction of current therefore i can write the third term as minus 8 i2 we have reached the point f we are going towards a during this we are encountering one battery i it's a emf is 6 volt you are moving from negative terminal to positive terminal 
therefore the potential is rising. So in the direction of current, according to sign convention, potential rises are taken as positive. Therefore, I will write plus 6, it must be equated to 0. So this is the way of applying the Kirch of second law. One more example, you take the second loop and in the case of second loop, start from point B that is for loop B E D C B, I begin with the point B okay? and I will go towards E. So therefore, uh, I get here, I get here B to E, therefore it is minus, okay, current flowing is I1 plus I3 multiplied by the resistance 3. I reach the point E, I had to go towards D, here no resistor, then from D to C, first I am getting one battery, therefore it is plus 9, plus sign because we are going in the direction of current and potential is rising, so potential rises are taken as positive. Now across the resistor of 5 ohm, in the direction of current, the product of current and resistance is taken as negative. We have reached the point C and from C to B, no resistor, therefore we are not adding anything, so it is equal to 0. So this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. So if you want to calculate the currents through each and every branch or potential drop across any resistor, you can solve these two equations and find the values of I1 and I2 and that I1 and I2 can be used to calculate the current through the 3 ohm resistors. So like this, the kids of laws are helpful for us to calculate current and potential difference in any electrical network. Students, select such type of other examples, previous years questions and do practice compulsorily. In the next topic, here I have taken four resistors P, Q and R, S, P, Q, R and S. These four resistors are connected in the four arms here as shown in figure. Between these two points B and D, we have connected here one galvanometer. Across the ends or across these two the terminals, across the, these two points A and C, we have connected one battery of EMF E. So this type of connection of resistors and connection of this galvanometer of resistance G, this circuit is actually called as the Wheatstone bridge. So now we will be studying about the details of the Wheatstone bridge and how to find out the condition for balancing it and what is the use of uh, this particular bridge. Okay. So, V stone uh, bridge, I am writing here V stone bridge. Now, this problem can be solved by using the Kirchhoff laws. Consider the first loop. In this first loop, for loop number 1, apply the Kirchhoff second law according to that, start from the point A. So, minus I1 P we have reached the point B, we are going down towards point D, therefore it is minus IG into G. In these two steps, steps, I have taken the product of current and resistance. We are traveling in the direction of current, therefore this product is negative, potential drop is taking place. Then we have reached the point D, we have to go towards point A, therefore this term will become positive because we are going against the direction of current. So here current is I minus I1 multiplied by R, it is equal to 0. This is the first equation. Similarly, I will be considering the second loop for loop number 2 here. In the same way, apply the Kirchhoff voltage law, second law. Start from the point B, then I get I1 minus IG multiplied by Q with negative sign. We have reached the point C, we have to go towards point D, we are going against the direction of current, therefore this term is plus. So here I minus I1 plus IG multiplied by the resistance and we are going up from D to B, therefore it is plus IG into G, it is equal to 0. This is equation number 2. 
So, from these two equations, we can derive the condition for balancing of a Wheatstone bridge. We can say that this bridge is balanced only if no current is flowing in this particular galvanometer. It means the potential at point B and potential at point D must be equal. In other words, if the potential difference between the point B and D is 0, no current flows through that arm. When current through the galvanometer is 0, that is Ig equal to 0, then only we say that Wheatstone bridge is balanced. In what condition this Ig becomes 0? That is what we have to find out. And for this purpose, what we will do? We will put Ig equal to 0 in equations 1 and 2. So, then we get minus I 1 into P, since Ig equal to 0, this term becomes 0, plus I am writing this term I minus I 1 multiplied by R, this is equal to 0. This is equation number 3. Similarly, from equation 2, I put Ig equal to 0 here. So, I get I 1 into Q, here this Ig equal to 0, therefore this term becomes 0 and here Ig equal to 0, therefore remaining terms are plus I minus I 1 into S equal to 0. This is equation number 4. Now, what we will be doing? Divide this equation number 3 by equation number 4. Okay, no? You take this, this term and this term towards right side and then divide. So, this minus and when this goes towards right side, minus comes there. So, those minus minus gets cancelled. So, if these two equations are divided, then ultimately we get P upon Q, it must be equal to R upon S. That means, if the ratio of the resistors P and Q, if it is equal to the ratio of the resistors R and S, then only we can say that the Wheatstone bridge is balanced. Therefore, this equation represents the condition for balancing a Wheatstone bridge. This is two mark question, frequently asked question, therefore it has to be practiced compulsorily. What is the use of this Wheatstone bridge? Is it possible to construct this in the laboratory? Is there any practical form of this? Then the answer is yes. There is a practical form of Wheatstone bridge and the name of that bridge is known as the meter bridge. We can also call it as the slide wire bridge. Now, let us study about the slide wire bridge and for this purpose, we use a special type of apparatus in which we use a wire which is known as the meter bridge wire which is made of a constant and R Eureka and how it is constructed, how it can be represented with the help of a diagram, let me explain here. The meter bridge consists of 1 meter long meter bridge wire, 1 meter long wire, it has 1 meter long wire like this. This is the wire of length 1 meter. This is usually fitted to a wooden board, wooden support. And here you have one metallic strips you know, like this and at this end also there is another metallic strip connected here. Okay. The two shapes are similar, thickness is also similar like this. Between these two, there is one more straight strip, you know, conducting strip. All these are fitted over a wooden support, wooden board. Near this scale, uh, near this wire, there is a scale also, a scale also fitted, so that you can find out, you can measure the length of uh, the wire where the meter bridge is or which stone bridge is balanced. Between this point and this point, that is this gap is called as a left gap. Here we connect one resistance box, one resistance box is connected here like this. So that I can introduce a known resistance R in the circuit. In the right gap, here I have one resistor or a wire of a particular material 
whose resistance is not known. So usually we call this as the unknown resistance. So I am representing it by x. Then this middle kind, this point is D and here I connect one battery, one plug key and I complete the circuit. Okay. Now at point D we have a galvanometer and this galvanometer is connected to the jockey. Now this circuit is called as the meter bridge circuit. Now let us compare this uh, with Wheatstone bridge, how it is similar. Here left resistance R, it is represented by this resistance R here. Here X, it is, fitted, uh, it is connected in place of the resistance S. Whereas those two resistors P and Q, they are lying on this wire AB. That means this 1 meter length wire, it has two resistance in it. One is P, another is Q. So this setup is used to find out the value of unknown resistance. There is an experiment in your syllabus also. I hope that by this time you must have uh, completed this practical. Now what, are the, what is the procedure, what are the various steps for calculating the value of unknown resistance x. For this purpose what you have to do, you introduce some resistance, some suitable resistance from the resistance box say uh, 2 ohms. Then after completing the circuit, slide the jockey over this wire from A to B at one particular point known as, let us say, okay, let me call this point as B and uh, this point as C. At one particular point B on this wire, the deflection in the galvanometer will be 0. Deflection in the galvanometer 0 means no current is flowing through it. When no current is flowing through it, then we say that the bridge is balanced. So in that balanced condition, what happens? This length AB is called as L and known as 